Hello everyone, my name is Dong Han Yu. I'm from Connecticut Manor University Language Technology Institute. Today I'm going to present the work Knowledge Embedding Based Graph Convolutional Network. This is joint work with Yimi Yang, Rohong Zhang, and Yue Xing Wu. So we'll first talk about background and motivation, then method, then experiment, and finally the summary. So graph convolutional networks are applied on graphs. So one graph, one type of graph is single relational graphs where each age are ages are homogeneous without extra information, such as citation network. And another type of graph is multi-relational graph, also known as knowledge graph. So for example, here, uh, the entity, each nodes are, the nodes are sun, earth, and solar system, and there can be relation between them. So it's a, so single relational graphs has been intensively studied recent years, but a multi-relational graph, uh, applying GCN in multi-relational graphs is still underexplored and is the focus of this work. So the first motivation is that the paradigm of previous work focusing on uh, using graph convolution to, on the node in, or entity embedding and the age and relation embeddings to update the node embeddings. But for the age embeddings, they they just use the, they are just uh, use the previous age embedding. So this has a problem that the age embedding update does not incorporate the neighbor node information. So what we propose is that symmetrically we should apply graph convolution uh, to update the age embeddings and aggregate the neighbor node embeddings. And secondly, that motivation is how to incorporate relation embedding in GCM. The previous work showed that we can actually borrow from the knowledge embedding methods which jointly model the entity and relation embeddings. But the problem with the previous work doing this is that they only incorporate a very limited number of uh, knowledge embedding methods. So, so the, it comes to our method. So we first talk about the reformulation of a vanilla GCN on single relational graph. This is a toy single relational graph with five nodes and four edges. So to update the embedding of node one, we ask its neighbor node three, two, and four to pass its own embedding to node one and node one aggregate this embedding and update its embedding. And the same thing happened on to update the embedding of node two and update the embedding of node three. So then we can say, we can think about it in a different view. So we first assign weight to each age by its connected node embedding. For example, on the age between one node one and node three, the weight is the dot product between the embedding edge one and edge three. And same thing here, the node one, the age between node one and node four, the weight is the dot product of the embedding H1 and H4. After assigning this, those weights, so when we update the embedding of node one, actually, for example, the node three will pass its embedding H3 to node one. And the H3 actually equals to the derivative of the H weight with respect to the embedding of node one. And the same thing here, H4 is actually can be also re, can also equals to the derivative of H weight with respect to the embedding of node one. And when we update node two, we can we also observe such kind of phenomenon here. And when we update node three. So what does this equation reveals? So let's talk about this in a more uh, formal mathematical way. So to update the embedding of node V, it has, in normal GC, in Valina GCN, it has two steps. First thing step is to aggregate the neighbor node embedding. And the second step is uh, to use the aggregating embedding MV combined with this or original embedding and pass through some nonlinear transformation to get uh, the updated embedding as V prime. So then we have this reformulation here. The HU can be written as a derivative of uh, HU dot product HV, the H weight, and with respect to the node embedding HV. And we can move the sum to the nu numerator here. And this means that the MV is actually a gradient to maximize the sum of weights on the edges connecting node V. And uh, then after knowing that this is a gradient, so actually the next step, the update step can 
is regarded as a generalized gradient ascent with the learning rate one. So the MV is a gradient to maximize the weight sum, and one here is the learning rate. And the sigma and W can be regarded as a generalized uh, transformation. So this reveals that one layer of GCN update is actually we first calculate the age weights by the dot product between node embeddings. And then we perform one step gradient ascent to maximize the sum of weights on the observed edges. So this is actually very similar to the link prediction objective, where we want to learn a better node embedding that can reflect the observed edges on the graph. So then how do we extend this to knowledge graph where the age connecting are, consists of a head entity, relation, and tail entity. So for example, in this toy knowledge graph. And uh, so this is where we can borrow the idea of knowledge embedding methods. Um, because knowledge embedding methods are just to map the embedding of head entity, embedding of relation, embedding of tail entity to a scalar value. For example, in trans E, it uh, calculates the norm of the distance uh, between the sum of uh, head entity and relation ent entity with uh, between the and the tail entity here. So after knowing that we can use the f function, borrow f function, uh, we have such a, like uh, f function for knowledge embedding method. Then we can assign weights by this knowledge embedding function. For example, the h e three r one e one. We can use their embeddings passed through the f function and the, uh, and calculate a weight and to be the age weight here and same does same as other ages. So in that sense, after calculating those edge weights, then following the previous slides, we can pass the gradient to update the entity embedding. So for example, to update the embedding of entity E1, we can pass a gradient or derivative with respect to its own embedding here. And same thing here. So to update the embedding of entity E2, we can use the derivative um, of its connecting edges. And the same thing, we can also update the relation embedding using the same formula here, just to calculate the edge weight and calculate the gradient and pass to the and pass the embedding to it. And same thing here, we can update the relation R3. So this is a more mathematical way to say this. So for the embedding update or relation update, the first step is to aggregate the neighbor embedding, which are calculated by the derivative of the age weight and uh, its own embedding, and then updating embedding by some nonlinear transformation. So in this way, the graph convolution operations are performed to update both entity and the relation embeddings. But there, there are three several things we want to notice. First, that is that F function can be any existing knowledge embedding methods. Proposing new F is beyond the scope of this work. Secondly, is that the derivative can be automatically calculated. So, which is, uh, and it's very easy to implement. The second thing, the third thing is that uh, our method subsumes uh, several representative uh, multi-relational GCM methods. And uh, due to time constraint, we omit it here. And uh, for the experiment, and so we apply this our model into two downstream tasks: a knowledge graph alignment and uh, entity classification. And then we incorporate six different knowledge embedding methods, including trans E, dot dist mod, and trans H, trans D, and rotate E and quad E here. So knowledge graph alignment is actually a task where we are given two knowledge graph and we want to find the, a pair of entities that refer to the same real world entity. And for example, we are given the label that E1 and E2 prime are the same entity where they are linked together. And we want to predict whether E3 and E3 prime are the same entity or whether E4 and E5 prime are the same entity. And uh, these are the data sets we use so the main results is that the first chunk um, is uh, are the methods are designed specifically for knowledge graph alignment task. The second chunk are some multi-relational graph convolution network method. And the final line is R method. And the evaluation metric are MRR, HSAT1, HSAT10, all the higher the better. 
So we can see that our model significantly outperforms baseline methods. And then we want to ask uh, the question, so what's the impact of incorporating different uh, knowledge embedding methods? Do they perform differently? So the right uh, column shows that, uh, shows the results on the three different data sets separately. And for each row, it uh, incorporates uh, different uh, knowledge embedding methods like trans E, trans H, or rotate E. So we can see that actually incorporating different KE methods has a significant impact on the performance. For example, on this data set, uh, the performance of squad E is significantly better than performance of this amount here. And the second thing is that the, the performance ranks are actually very similar across different data sets. So we can see that overall, uh, the quality is the best, and the ro then rotate E, trans H, trans E, trans D, and the finally dist mount. Then we ask another question is, uh, so because we said we want to perform graph convolution on relation embeddings, so how is the learned relation embeddings? So we did another experiment uh, with, on the relation alignment task, basically similar like uh, entity alignment, we want to find the pair of relations which refer to the same real world relation. And this is our MR results on three different data sets. Where we can see our R methods outperforms the previous baseline methods by a large margin, which shows that our method can learn a better relation embedding by incorporating entity, the neighbor information. And uh, another task is uh, entity classification over knowledge graph. Basically, we're giving some labels, maybe category labels of the entity, of some of the entities on the knowledge graph, and we want to predict uh, the label of other entities. And this is our the statistics of uh, the data sets we use. So for the AAM and the WN data set, we perform multi-class classification since there are at most one label for each entity. But for FB15K, we perform multi-label classification because maybe more than one label um, are available for each entities. And these are the metric we use. So we can see that actually our methods consistently outperforms other methods on all the data sets and all the evaluation metric. And uh, the, we also want to know what's the results of incorporating different knowledge embedding methods. And here are the results. So we see that first, incorporating different knowledge embedding methods seems to have a small impact on the performance compared to uh, the knowledge graph alignment task. For example, we see that uh, on the AM data set, the birth best performance is 91, but the worst is uh, 89.5. It's actually pretty co close. And the performance ranks are also different across different data sets. But overall, we can see that trans E uh, performs uh, similar like quad E and then trans H, trans D, rotate E, and finally dist mount. Recall that in knowledge graph alignment task, actually, uh, quad E is, is the best, and then rotate E, trans H, and uh, finally dist mount. So we can see the performance rank uh, seems to be task dependent. It's not universal. So finally, come to the summary of our work. So we propose a, a framework, KEGSM, which leverages six different knowledge embedding methods into GCM for knowledge graph modeling. And more importantly, that we update both the entity and the relation representation using graph convolution operations. And the second thing is that our model originates from, from a new intuition behind the graph convolution. And uh, we view graph convolution as a, a generalized uh, and projected gradient ascent to maximize the sum of uh, observed weights over the observed ages of, in the graph. Third thing is uh, experiments on the knowledge graph alignment and entity classification uh, show the effectiveness of, of our model. And finally, I want to mention uh, one possible future interesting direction is that maybe our, we can extend our framework to go beyond the triplets knowledge graph and to the knowledge hypergraphs where one uh, age can connect in more than two entities. And I think that will be a very interesting uh, um, um, research direction in the future. Yeah, that's all the presentation. And finally, this, these are the references. Okay, thank you. Thank you for listening.